Here's a list of items needed for this build. Step one, we'll need to shorten the barrel. So we're gonna measure from the bolt face. This one is 19 and a half inches. We're gonna mark it for 18 and a quarter. That way after we true the barrel up on the lathe after the cut, it will be just over 18 inches, which will put our finished product at just over 20. Uh, the KA1212 and the KA1212BR both add two inches to the barrel length. And if you install them with high temp silver solder, it counts as permanent attachment per the ATF. We're going to do the initial cut with the chop saw and then we'll touch it up on the lathe to true up the end. Now we'll true the end up on the lathe. Now we're going to prep the end of the barrel for silver soldering by sandblasting it. This will remove any paint, bluing, rust, any other contaminants that might result in a weak solder joint. Now we're going to liberally flux all the parts and put them together on a stainless steel heat sink to ensure even heating and that we won't warp the barrel or cause any kind of damage. You're going to want to apply the heat mainly to the mounting collar on the KA1212 or KA1212BR and heat it up until it is a low orange um, color and then start feeding silver solder into the joint. Uh, continue to heat all the way around, solder will flow all the way down to the shoulder inside and uh, then allow it to cool for a half an hour. Now we're going to sandblast the finished barrel assembly to remove any excess solder and to clean up all our solder lines. This will also prep the barrel for parkerizing. At this point we'll also sandblast all the other steel parts for the shotgun so that they can be parkerized as well in preparation for duracoating. After sandblasting we'll degrease these parts and put them in the park tank to get a nice even parkerized finish. After a few minutes in the park tank, they are done and ready to be removed, washed, and dried. Everything's been dark coated matte black and cured for a week, so now we're going to reassemble the shotgun. First, we're going to install the Magpul MOE 4 in. Pretty straightforward job. Let's just slide on there. Put the 4 in nut in place, and they come with a nice little plastic tool that keeps you from scratching up the mag tube. Install the Magpul SGA buttstock. Uh, kind of looks like something out of a video game, but actually, the ergonomics on it are not that bad. Now we're going to install the barrel. Now we're going to install the S&J Hardware Delrin follower. These are machined from solid Delrin bar. It's really kind of nice because they're self-lubricating. And the plastic is hard enough that it will not let the grit and everything get embedded in the plastic like you get with some of the polyurethane followers. Uh, these are pretty much jam proof. Now we'll load the Wolf Extra Power Mag Spring. And Tech Star Extension. We're now going to install the SJR with 3 Oversized Safety in the Trigger Group. Insert the SJ Arma 3 safety from the right hand side with the large ball portion sticking out. Install the detent ball. Install the detent spring. Use a small punch to depress the spring while pushing in the pin. Should go in by hand. Press the spring in until it's flush and we're done. Now we're going to check and make sure that the safety is engaging both ways. 
and it is ready for use. Now we're going to install the trigger group that we put the S&J oversized safety on earlier. Just drop this into place. We'll take the two screws that come with the side saddle and put those in place of the OEM trigger group pins. We're going to put a single drop of red Loctite on each of the threaded holes in the side saddle. This will keep that from backing off and working itself loose under recoil. Put this in place on the receiver. And tighten the two bolts. You want these snug but not too tight. That's a lot of the reason we use the red Loctite also, is that we don't have to torque down the screws to keep those things from backing out. Now we're going to install the mag clamp to give us a sling swivel and to keep that magazine tube from being able to work itself loose. I just like to set these right in front of the mounting collar on the mag extension. Like People like them further forward, but it keeps them from trying to walk. Now we just have to install the high-vis fiber optic front bead in the pre-drilled 648 hole in the KA-1212BR breaching attachment. Turn that so it's lined up. And it is done. I usually like to put these with the big end facing the shooter. It makes it a little easier to pick up. It's not quite as bright, but it's a lot easier for you to see. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for new episodes covering other frequently asked questions and unique builds.